Hi, Mom and Jen. And whoever else, of course, I might give this knife to. Um, but Mom and Jen are the first ones who are going to get it because I'm going to make kitchen knives, three identical ch kitchen knives. I get one, Mom gets one, and Jen gets one. Okay, quick side note. They're, they're not identical. Moving on. It's all made from 440 steel. Ooh, not that you care, but it's really high-end stuff. Okay, I drew out knife patterns. I basically cut them out with my angle grinder. Cut out those little patterns in there. And then uh, sand them on a belt sander. Before I was using this, <laughs> I got the belt sander for 10 bucks at a pawn shop and I screwed it. It actually works really well. It's just not high speed enough. So that doesn't really work so well. And we got the sandpaper angle grinder stuff and that works well. But today I was able to get myself a belt grinder and we're gonna see how efficient it is later. But right now, um, I'm gonna show you how I built the forge. Well, the blower, the, the Air Force blower. I'm gonna show you that first. And uh, that's gonna be right. So these are the basic parts. There's the gas line goes in the propane tank. That part, that end screws into here. That end screws into here. This screws into here. That screws into here. And I actually have never done this before. This is a cap that I threaded. You can't really, oh, you can kind of see it. I threaded it so that this welding tip screws in here. And what it does is it blows air. Oh, there it goes, it focused. It blows air or propane out of that into here and you cut holes in here where the tip's going to be up to here. Let's see if I can focus that a little better. The tip's going to be up to there and what it does is as the air, the gas is flowing through, it sucks in air and creates a big whoosh flame. So it'll be pretty cool. And then I have to um, build the forge itself, which I got some hair light and other materials, and I'll show you that next. But for right now, I'm gonna quickly just construct this together and uh, see if I can work on my editing skills and see if this works. Ugh, dang it, okay, well, <clears throat> I tried, okay. I mean, you, you see I got halfway, right? But I guess my magical powers of editing are not that good, so the snap I did only got us halfway. Now we've gotta get it <laughs> so that that goes in there then I'm gonna have holes cut in here okay you'll see when I snap my fingers again it's gonna happen I hope or maybe it won't and then holes in here that these screws are gonna use to brace it in there right and then I've got another bit I'm gonna put in the end to make the blower like wah really good I want to take a second to say I know what you're thinking. Joel, why do you have a fire, a flame so big, and a wooden shed? Isn't that dangerous? Isn't that going to burn the whole house down? I also want to reiterate what I said in the video, which you couldn't really hear because it was all muffled and loud. I got a friend in the propane business who approved my design, and he said I did a great job. It's not going to burn the shed down. As a matter of fact, Air Force burners are really hard to keep lit if you move it. If wind comes in strong, It'll blow the flame out, so if it drops to the ground, it'll knock the flame out. Furthermore, I actually stopped using it in the shed because, not because of the flame and the fire risk, but because when you heat up steel so hot and you dip it in oil, it creates a lot of smoke, and my lungs hurt the first time. So anyway, no worries. Okay, so it's time to put mom's knife in, right? Okay. I did it once. I got it up to magnetic temperature. Now it's time to go back in for a second time. We're going to let it cool down again, and then back in for a third time, and then we will heat treat. Boom. Okay, so this is Jen's knife after the heat treat. I mean, it's all black as a scale and oil and all that stuff. 
and uh, it's sharp. Let's see. Let's. Uh, I don't have a way of holding this. Now, if it's sharp, or not sharp, if it's hardened, this file should skate right off of it. Yep, it is completely hard. Excellent. Now, take it over here and clean it up. Just simply turn it on. so I need both hands back. So I gotta put my respirator on. I don't even know where, oh, there it is, respirator. Uh, safety glasses are hanging up and I might do the resin later. I don't know, we'll see, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get to work on cleaning up that blade first. Pretty cool, huh? On a quick side note, um, Mom, when you were here, you advised me. You said, look, you've got this big shed. It is pretty big, right? Pretty, pretty big shed, okay, with these... Hi, Chewy. Say hi. <laughs> okay, with these lines, okay? So, you said, and you've got a nice little ramp out there. I'm not going to open the door. I have it locked just for now. And you said, put the kids' ramp in here. So, I did. And it works great. Oh, and we also bought new bikes. <clears throat> April's. It's very nice. Uh, Schwinn. Shimano um, derailers. Not bad. Not the best, but whatever. At least there's not a grip shift over there. My bike. It's very nice, my bike is. Um, we went on a ride today. It turns out I'm out of shape. Go figure. And then we carry the kids in this. Blake does not fit. So we're going to surprise him for Christmas with a new bike. Anyway, that's all. Hi, guys. Um... We're sitting here waiting for Blake's school to get out. It's 324 right now. We're here. This is Reedy Creek. This is the carpool lane. I got here early, so I'm kind of far up in it. Um, and I'm working. What I do to keep track of time or to keep uh, myself busy while waiting here is I work on knives. All right. Looks pretty cool what I'm doing right now. Oh, by the way, say hi, Liam. How are you? Good? Good, okay. Um, I didn't get to show you this. This is the, my, for some reason when I when I got my, I got a new uh, belt grinder, a table belt grinder. And I, I, I went to make this knife. It took me like a half hour. I took the flat steel. I already had the design drawn into it. I took my angle grinder and I put in a cutting bit on it and I cut out. I couldn't do this part really well. That's what I'm working on right now. And I cut it, just cut it out. Well, this part. Anyway. Um, and then I took, this reason why it looks so nice here is because I take my table grinder and I ground it down. Well, you grind in the bevels. These are the bevels right here. You grind them in pretty deep first. Then you grind it flat. That'll reduce the amount of bevel to it. Okay. But, um... Also, the part here is right here. I cut in on accident. Had a little runaway angle grinding incident there where I was going this way. And I went, Ugh. So that's where we're at. Now, what I'm doing right now is filing right here to make it nice to hold with your index finger. This is, oh, where, where, here we go. This is a, I'm going to call it a half moon file. I don't know what it's actually called, but that's all I'm doing. I'm using t-shirts and I bought t-shirts and a pair of jeans. The, the white here is uh, jeans. That's a t-shirt material. I'm starting to think though this isn't, you know, I don't know. Anyway, it works. Um, <clears throat> I mean, kind of, when you, when you bring it in close, kind of looks like jeans. Yeah, I bought them at a thrift store for a dollar a piece. I'm doing this as cheap as possible with hopefully quality work. What do you think? Um, stainless steel pins and uh, 
It's better than spending a couple hundred dollars on this stuff, right? April would kill me. Okay. Anyway, by the way, yeah, I have not spent a lot of money on this project at all because I've made everything myself. The forge, the, the air, for, air forced, forced, forced air burner, for, air forced, for, for, whatever. Made it all myself for under $30. Bam. Um, the knife material is more expensive. This is, that was 10 bucks a foot. But it's 440 steel, so it's good stuff. It's gonna be worth it. It's gonna hold edges really well. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I don't have to send it to mom to have it sharpened because she has that good sharpener. Yeah, so I kind of had a dumb moment here where I realized, well, you're gonna be sending it to mom. So why would you be sending her her own knife to sharpen her own knife? I mean, she can, but I was just talking. It was kind of stupid. Anyway, back to the show. But you know, it works on the same principle as what I'm doing here. Uh, one edge is high coarse. The one disc sander in there is high coarse. It is meant to grind, grind in the actual bevel. And then the other side is just a flat disc that has um, a high grain count, probably in like the 400s to 1,000. So maybe even more. I have a stone that's 3,000 to 10,000 in it. Working. I'm getting there. Anyway. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick. I am about to drill the holes. And I drew a line exactly half inch down from the top. Measured it five inches and did one divided it into four sections because there's gonna be three pins. There's gonna be three pins. One, two, three, and these are inch and a half, inch and a half. Oh, sorry, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. So uh, it's still in the tank. We're gonna call it good, right? And then this is before tempering. I've already heat treated it here. I don't know if I showed the got the video of it or not. Have to grind some more, but we're getting there. There you can see on the back end, that first one is about to go through. Anyway, oh, and if you're worried, that's my table. That's the MDF. So these are the knives after they've been tempered. I don't know if you can see. Well, you can kind of see you up there. See how it's kind of yellow? Let's see if I can show you a difference. Hey, quiet, boys. Okay. You see how it's kind of yellow there? I'll hold that up to show you the difference. Tempered, not tempered. Or well, at least I don't know if it's tempered. It probably is tempered. I just realized later that you just grind off the yellow and carry on. But I tempered them in the oven, 400 degrees, they sit for an hour. Heat dried up there. Next, I made my carta. This is my carta. These are the from the previous, the t-shirts. And it, you know, you grind it, you know, you put it on here, okay, all right. Mark your holes, drill your holes, trace it out, cut it out, glue it all together, just epoxy it together, grind it in, make the handle fitting. We're almost there. Um, polishing this is what's next, which is gonna take a long time. So, and then hopefully I can figure out how to sharpen these. I'm not very good at it, it turns out. Anyway, 